Okay. All right. Obviously, uh, you know, those, I don't know, eight minutes of, of the third quarter, uh, we're, we're not our best version of our, ourselves. But first half, uh, I thought we brought a, a, a rock-solid approach uh, to the game and, uh, and the finish. Uh, probably the last six, eight minutes of the fourth quarter and the furious finish in, in overtime, uh, we did show uh, some grit, some toughness, uh, some big plays uh, down the stretch. Uh, you know, Tyler was very good, uh, obviously. Uh, and then overall, it's probably, you know, close to 40 minutes of, of good basketball. Uh, we would like more, more consistency. That's what we're working on. Um, but we like the fact that those lessons will happen after a, an overtime win. What drove you? I mean, very. I can't recall a lot of times at all. You've done five for five. So what sort of at that moment made you say this is the time to make that kind of move? And Well, and- we, we talked about it at halftime. We really wanted to come out with a great sense of urgency and uh, not necessarily – you're not trying to throw a knockout punch. It's more about uh, our disposition, our focus, our attention to detail, uh, the energy, efforts, uh, everything. I had to call a timeout uh, and then uh, – the tide was still going, you know, we had a 21 point lead, uh, and it evaporated like that. Uh, so I just felt it was uh, appropriate to uh, get the second unit in there and see if it could change the energy of the game. And it did. It, it, the second unit, uh, uh, you really have to commend them uh, for, for shifting the momentum. It's a tough thing in this league when the momentum shifts uh, and then you try to get it back. Uh, uh, sometimes it, it, it can be elusive, uh, but the second unit, um, you know, played some good basketball. With that second unit, Tyler Hero, you mentioned him a little bit, but how big was his scoring, especially just to withstand uh, Washington's run there in this third and fourth Yeah, quarters? look, I, 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 I would like to start with his defense. He, he brought uh, a much more uh, active and focused and committed effort on that side of the floor. Uh, that earned him more opportunities, more minutes. Uh, and then offensively, he's a talent. Uh, he is. He's fearless. Uh, he has skills. Uh, he can read defenses, uh, and he has a a, a flair for the moment. Uh, so those things uh, we we need, we want, um, but he still has to progress defensively. And I thought he he played a complete game uh, on both sides. I know the record's very good, and the home record is outstanding, and the overtime record, it's all good. But how much do you like that? Even though you are winning, you have a group that's new and you still have tons of teachable moments. It seems like every night. How much are you enjoying? I know you're not enjoying parts of it, but how much the, the fact that there is clear things for this team to work on and find ways to get better, how much do you like that part that it's coming with wins? You, um, you would obviously always pre- prefer that, um, but you take whatever the, the schedule and the games give you. And we've... Uh, had a, a lot of opportunities uh, to develop uh, uh, some grit, uh, to be able to face adversity, to be able to find solutions uh, against competition when it's not necessarily going your way and momentum shifting back and forth. Uh, these things uh, help you in, in the long run, uh, but it makes always makes coming into work the next day uh, a little bit brighter. The way this team has been able to, in the actual overtime periods, to take it up a notch defensively, like what has really stood out to you about what aspect of that just in the actual overtime? We have some ultra high-level competitors in that room uh, and guys that uh, can guard multiple positions uh, and then the competitiveness of the moment uh, in an overtime game or a close fourth quarter game brings out something more uh, in all of those guys. Clearly from the head coaching chair, I would like to see that more consistently throughout the course of the game. Every team is searching for that you know, right now, so it's not exclusive to us, but we have it in us. Um, you know, like I said, in the first half and in the last six, eight minutes uh, of the game and in overtime, uh, those were some of our best versions of uh, ourselves effort-wise, detail-wise, uh, and commitment to that side of the floor. Jimmy obviously made a bunch of big plays in overtime, and I know you discussed it throughout the season. Dwayne was on a conference call earlier today, and he said, Jimmy, 
he always knew Jimmy was the right amount of crazy to fit in with you and Pat. How would you describe Jimmy's ability to fit in the way he has and get the younger players to buy in to what he's selling? Uh, look, we've always admired him as a player. Uh, and like Dwayne said, we felt that his values match ours. And we never think anything of that. If you, you know, want to use the adjective, quote unquote, his crazy matches our crazy. Uh, people have probably said that more about us than him. <laughs> so we think it's a marriage made in heaven. It's our language. He speaks our language. We, we speak his language. We think it's normal behavior. We think uh, if you lose or don't play well, we expect everybody in the building to be probably uh, irrationally upset, even during the regular season or in a regular season game during January. Uh, that's how we're wired. That's why uh, he's perfect for us to be the face of the franchise moving forward. Uh, and then stylistically – the way he plays the game of basketball and the way he competes uh, fits and on so many different levels to be able to, to help our young guys grow and gain confidence and play off of uh, his talent uh, and his competitiveness and his will um, because he's a very giving and sharing player. Um, that was probably you know one of the, the most pleasant things uh, that I've learned about him uh, in our setting is he wants other guys to flourish and he understands the big picture guys need to be better and different, you know, in April, May than they, they are right now. And for that to happen, he has to facilitate that. And uh, we think it's a, a, a fantastic fit. What does it say about Kelly to stay ready and actually to give you something very meaningful tonight after sort of the up and down ride to getting back in the rotation? Look, this is the NBA. This is what it should be in every locker room and every team. You get paid a, a, a handsome salary uh, to uh, contribute and help uh, to a team. There's 15 guys uh, to a roster. You can't play everybody, so you, you have to be ready uh, and make the most of your opportunities when you get them. And uh, most of the time, it's not an indictment on anyone. You're just trying to get successful lineups and rotations and successful basketball out there. Uh, but in my you know, 12 years, you always need everybody at some point. Uh, and, yes, uh, KO is, is stable in the mind. He, he conditions. He works beyond the scenes. Uh, he gets extra practice time. He's constantly watching film. Uh, and he is a talent. Uh, he gives us a different skill set. We're able to play uh, through him uh, in a lot of high post actions. He spaces the floor. He's skilled. He can pass. These things we need, uh, and and he's produced, uh, you know, in this period of time, and uh, just much much like uh, JJ did. Well, along those same lines, he wasn't as productive as he was the other night. But what was your decision to leave James in there towards the end of the game? What did you like about his performance tonight? Well, in the uh, they scored 135 points, so we needed some of our better defenders out there. I was trying to get minutes for he and DJ, and you know when you have JJ, DJ, Bam, Jimmy, uh, it looks like we can defend. <laughs> uh, to that, the uh, the challenge of trying to stop Bradley Beal tonight uh, with him rolling uh, as good as he is. What different things do you try so that momentum doesn't swing completely? I don't know. Way? I was just pissed off about the back cut because everything else, I don't really know how you can stop him from getting off his threes or we we're trapping him, zoning him, uh, throwing a second defender at him. He's got range, but he's he's really improved his game off the dribble. He can break you down now, and if you lean one way, he can go both directions. Uh, so we'll watch that back cut at the end of the game that we gave up probably 25 times uh, tomorrow. Jimmy will probably run that film session. All right, thanks.